The Andy Poland Show on ESPN 630, the sports capital. This is Ravens preview. Ravens getting ready to play the game of the year in the NFL, the Monday night game at San Francisco on Christmas night, the usual 820 kickoff, and they go into this game as five-and-a-half-point underdogs, which has uh, caused a little bit of a stir, some some ruffled feelings. Marlon Humphrey uh, said it, it made him sick. Uh, and then uh, Kyle Hamilton, you'll hear from him coming up uh, shortly, says that uh, they feel a little bit disrespected by that. But, you know, you get it done on the field, and both teams are 11-3 and three on the year, um, and both of them could wind up making a run towards the Super Bowl. It's important as well as there's only one team now that gets the first round by in the playoffs, so you want to have that best record in each league, and, and both teams are, are fighting for that. The Ravens, this is the first of, of two. This is a real juggernaut for them as they have to play at San Francisco, and then they play the Dolphins, which could be the deciding game as to uh, as to who gets home field. Some injuries uh, starting to pile up, as you would expect uh, this time of year. Keaton Mitchell out for the year after getting hurt last week. Uh, as far as the uh, report from last week, Odell Beckham missed practice with an illness. Uh, Zay Flowers is limited with a foot problem, so your two top receivers a little bit iffy. I would expect Beckham to be recovered in time, and I think uh, Zay Flowers, rookie, will find a way to suit up. Uh, Ronnie Stanley has been in and out of the lineup you know, for years now, uh, and now he's out in concussion protocol, so we'll see if he's ready to go on Monday night. Uh, Marcus Williams, safety, is dealing with a groin injury, but you know, all in all, this team is is hanging in there at this point, and that's you know the most important thing is that your quarterback is healthy. And at this point, in the last two years, they didn't have him, and so to have to have a healthy quarterback at this point in the year is a big deal. We are joined by Kevin Ostreicher, who does Locked On Ravens, and I was just uh, m- musing about the point spread and how the Ravens' feelings seemingly are ruffled by this. Do, do you buy the bulletin board material narrative that this will have the Ravens ultimately more fired up to play on Monday night? I think I think that they'll be fired up to do it. I know that there has been plenty of national media narratives, not only about the Ravens and the 49ers, but almost the game inside the game where you talk about it's a possible Super Bowl preview, but also could be the MVP decider. And I think Brock Purdy right now is kind of getting all the MVP hype. And look, he's had a great season. I'm not trying to take away anything from Brock and what he's done on the year. But I think that Lamar, even though he doesn't necessarily have the passing yards or the passing touchdowns that Brock has, he's right in the thick of that conversation. And so you look at some of the narratives that are being pushed out there. of, Oh, well, the 49ers are the best team in the NFL. It's not even close. And the Ravens don't have a chance in this game. I think that when they need – when the Ravens, they don't need motivation, but look, motivation helps. It can help, and so I think to me, Baltimore is a team that has earned the right to be in the conversation for best team in the NFL. Has earned the right to be called the best team in the AFC. But I think, with at least what I've seen narrative-wise, I think everybody's talking about San Francisco, and not a lot of people are talking about Baltimore. And look, they've kind of embraced that underdog role, and it's, it's been that way for them. Over the course of their franchise history, they've been the underdog plenty of times, and it's worked out for them. So I think that it's going to be a great game, and even though the 49ers are favored, and even though a lot of people are talking about San Francisco, if Baltimore goes in there to San Fran and wins this game, I think there are going to have to be a lot of conversations had about what the narratives were throughout the week here. Yeah, no question. And uh, and Jackson, as, as you mentioned, they have been an underdog not that many times uh, throughout his career, uh, 62 of the 75 career games uh in his starts that he has has been the favorite but he is nine and four as an underdog so he seems to embrace that the team seems to embrace that and I think the most important thing is we have only three games left in the season and Lamar Jackson is still upright and as long as that's the case you got to like the Ravens chances in any game they play don't you think oh 100 percent and I think that Again, with the past two seasons, how they've gone with Lamar being out and not being available down the stretch. I mean, th- this is what the Ravens have envisioned. We we know that, I mean, Lamar is so important. When you talk about the words most valuable player, I, I think that Lamar is the most valuable player in the league considering who the Ravens are with him and who the Ravens are without him. And with what he's able to bring and how calm and poised and cool, calm, collected he's looked this season – the improvements I've seen, and especially within the new offense with Todd Munkin, it's, it's been key. And 
Lamar is somebody that, you're right, there's a chance whenever he's on the field, you can't count the Ravens out whenever he's on the field. And the Ravens haven't really trailed a ton this season. I know, I know the stat, there have been a couple of stats that have just been very impressive about how little they've trailed. But again, a game like the Rams, where they weren't down by like 20 points or anything like that, but they had to kind of claw back and fight back. It seems like this team has had almost everyone in the book where you talk about the blowouts versus Seattle and Detroit, you have the big character wins, big divisional wins. I think that they're really battle tested. And these final three weeks here, you got the, arguably the best team in the NFL and the 49ers, depending on what you think about them versus the Ravens. You got a huge game against Miami that will probably determine the one seed in some way, shape, or form. And then you round it out with Pittsburgh. Lamar hopefully will be available for all three of those games. And it will again just get the Ravens ready for the playoffs and whether it is the one seed, whether they do have to play, well, hopefully it will be four games on their way to a Super Bowl win. The fact that he is available and ready and has looked the way he's looked this season, it's such a good omen for the Ravens and what they can do as the year winds down and the playoffs start up. Talking to Kevin Ostriker from Locked on Ravens as we do Ravens preview here on ESPN 630. You look at these stats and they're just about both of them top five in every category. The only real difference offensively is that San Francisco has the number two passing offense in the league and Baltimore is 20 Ravens obviously run the ball a little bit better but you look at that number two passing offense against the Ravens secondary which uh, you tell me is are they playing as at a high a level as they played all season with now you know Kyle Hamilton Hamilton being talked about as a pro bowler is is that secondary playing at at, at its best right now going into this game yeah they've They've been incredible. <laughs> that, that's the word I'll use here because it's guys stepping up and guys improving. I mean, we know Marlon Humphrey's Marlon Humphrey. I thought he had a big bounce back week against Jacksonville, where I think he definitely struggled a little bit against the Rams in week 14. But Brandon Stevens has been great the entire season, stepping in for Marlon as the number one guy and obviously playing across him as the number two. You mentioned Kyle Hamilton and, you know, Pro Bowl, All Pro. He, he's, he's lined up for multiple awards this year. He's been that good. And I think people are now starting to say, well, is he one of the best, if not the best safety in the league right now? You have Marcus Williams, who has been in and out with injury this year, but I think that for the most part, he's been really good. And, and if someone is that free safety, the, the guy you can put in single high, he's been great. And then Geno Stone, you know, was the interception leader for a while. now. I know that Ron Bland has passed him, but part of that is just because, you know, you have – depth in that secondary. I think Ronald Darby has stepped up and played well when he's been called upon. They've been playing Jay Larmer Davis a little bit more now. So it just seems like they have guys that they really like, and it's not just one or two guys. It's four, five, six guys. And the fact that I think going into the season, there were so many questions about, well, who, who's going to be the cornerback that can step up next to Marlon Humphrey? Can Kyle Hamilton take that second year leave? And I think almost every question has been answered and answered in a positive way. It's so good because you kind of marry what the pass rush has done with what the secondary has done. And the Ravens' pass rush consistently has been great the entire season. I mean, they have 50 sacks on the year. And both things go hand-in-hand hand with each other. The secondary, if they cover well, the pass rush can get there. If the pass rush gets there in a time the man of the secondary doesn't have to cover as long. And I think it's been a perfect thing for Matt McDonald and this defense, and the secondary is a huge part of it. Hitting the injuries here, uh, Odell Beckham illness, mispractice yesterday, Zay Flowers with a foot problem. Does that, does that possibly prevent him from playing on Monday night, or do you think he'll be recovered by then? I, I wouldn't think so. I, I think that he would be good to go by then. Obviously, you want to be cautious at this point in the season. And if you kind of rank where this game would rank in terms of a loss. I mean, this game is both important and not important at the same time for the Ravens because obviously a huge, a huge game, potential Super Bowl matchup, you know, we know we know what the storylines are for it. But then you have the fact that it's not a conference game mm-hmm. and if the Ravens lose, obviously you don't want to lose the game. But the game against Miami and the game against Pittsburgh, if you lose to San Francisco for the Ravens and then you beat Miami and Pittsburgh, you still get the one seed. So Again, if there's any doubt from the Ravens medical staff or doctors or anybody that, oh, this will impact long-term availability, then you know I might consider resting a guy or two here or there because you would rather have them, in my opinion, available for Miami and Pittsburgh than against San Francisco. But I, I do think, you know, John Harbaugh didn't express a ton of concern, and, and I think, you know, I'll rock with John Harbaugh and say that the, the, both those guys will be good to go, but... 
again, these injuries now, you kind of look at what Keaton Mitchell has gone through with the ACL. Right. We're not in September anymore. It's, it's December, and those injuries doesn't don't just have an impact for this season, you know, could potentially have impacts for next year, too, if they're serious enough. And obviously, knock on wood, the Ravens stay healthy because they really have a shot this year, and health plays a big part. Yeah, and uh, and also the fact that this is a Monday night game across the country, meaning you got this really short turnaround before you play this enormous game again the following weekend against Miami. All right, uh, the scoring defenses, one and two in the league. Baltimore number one, San Francisco number two, both of them giving up about 16 points a game. The spread is five and a half. Not that that would factor in who wins or loses, but who do you think wins this game on Monday night? It's, it's going to be a close one, I think. I, I would be shocked if it's a blowout either way, to be honest with you, because I just I think both teams are up to snuff with the other. It'll be a heavyweight, back-and-forth type of affair here. But to me, I think that the 49ers, I don't think, have faced the defense like the Ravens very often this season. You know, they, they faced Cleveland. They lost that game. We know Cleveland's up there with some of the best defenses in the league, too. San Francisco is a powerful offense. I mean, we talked about Brock Purdy earlier. They have Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, Brandon I, George Kittle, the list goes on and on there. But I think Baltimore's defense will come ready to play. Now, the thing with this is the Ravens are going to have to be ready to defend screens, defend some short stuff. Maybe Kyle Shanahan will throw a trick play in here, one, one play or two. But this defense has been so good this season, and it's been consistently good. I think we talk about the Ravens' offense, and – They've been good, but it's been inconsistent a lot of the time. The Ravens' defense has been consistently good, maybe outside of the run defense, if you want to argue that. But Baltimore, to me, is playing really well right now. They're motivated, and maybe this underdog talk does kind of push them over the hump here. So I'll pick the Ravens. I mean, they're playing well enough to where I I could pick either team, and it would make sense. But I'll pick Baltimore, and I'll say they'll win uh, maybe – 28 to 24, somewhere around there. Well, and, and relatively high scoring considering the way these two teams play defense. Interesting. Yeah. Good to talk to you. Uh, best of luck and uh, and have a great, uh, great holiday uh, on uh, Monday. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Merry Christmas. You too. That's uh, Kyle Osh- Kevin Ostriker, who's uh, with Locked On Ravens. Ravens getting ready to play Monday night. We'll have comments from players and coaches as we continue with Ravens preview on ESPN 630. Ravens on three, one, two, three. This is the Ravens Preview Show presented by Verizon. Here's Andy Polin. All right, this will be the eighth meeting between the Ravens and the 49ers. Ravens lead the all-time series 5-2. to two. They've won five of the last six. They won at Baltimore in 2019. Ravens did 20-17. to 17. Lamar Jackson ran for 101 yards and a touchdown, threw for 105 yards and a touchdown. Uh, I think we will have a similar score this time, given that both defenses are very good. San Francisco, number two in the league, giving up 16.7 a game. The Ravens, 16.1. Coverage here will start at 7.30 for the 8.20 kickoff in San Francisco. One of the big storylines this week, the disrespect for the Ravens, with the spread being five and a half, Marlon Humphrey, their fine cornerback, said it hurt his feelings a little bit. That kind of echoed by safety Kyle Hamilton. Yes and no. Uh, I think internally we don't feel that way. Uh, Externally, I don't know what it is, whether it's, I don't know what it is, but whether it's the lack of primetime games we've got or whatever, but I think um, the 11 and threes are not created equal right now um, in terms of the 49ers versus us. And um, we feel a little disrespected by that. Uh, I feel like we are the best team in the league, and uh, we've got an opportunity in front of the country to show it. Yeah, and uh, that will be that will be the spotlight and really might decide the MVP race. Is it going to be Lamar Jackson or is it going to be Brock Purdy? Uh, Lamar offered the chance to join in the hype, politely declined. Uh, entertainment, you know, um, it's going to be a very entertaining game. Like you said, both teams number one in um, their division. Uh, you just got to go out there ready and focus because it's a great team. There's some talk about this could be a Super Bowl preview. What do you think about that? Psst. Super Bowl is in February. We're in December right now. We got to focus on Monday night. You know, I'm not worried about what people say. Hmm, that's a good line. Yeah, Super Bowl's in February. We're in December. Uh, Roquan Smith, though, does like a little bit of hype, and he was on Good Morning Football this week um, and, and talked about what this matchup means and how important it is. And he has really 
taken over as both the on-field leader and the emotional leader of this team off the field, given that he's he's been there only a little over a year. Remember, he came from Chicago with the trade deadline last season and immediately assumed the Ray Lewis type of role. He's not the same guy as Ray Lewis, but he's filling a similar role for this team and was uh, more than happy to provide some yak about beating the 49ers. Yeah, I have a great deal of respect for the 49ers headed by uh, Shanahan and all of the guys on offense uh, from Purdy, McCaffrey to outside, you know, with a tight end position as well as the receiver and obviously uh, on the offensive line. So I'm excited. Uh, I think we have a great defense. I know we have a great defense and we're going to be ready to go. And I think it's going to start with making those guys one dimensional, first and foremost, stopping the run and then going from there. And I feel like if we do that, then things are going our favor. But it's not going to be an easy game and we don't want it the easy way we want it exactly uh, the roughest toughest way possible and that's just what truly makes us us and makes it Raven style of football and so we're going there and we got to take care of business by any means necessary yeah making them one dimensional that's going to be difficult Uh, San Francisco does have the number three rushing offense in the league at 140 yards a game but they have the number two passing offense an average of 262 Baltimore number 20 in passing at uh, at 210 yards a game, but they're the number one rushing offense at 163 uh, yards a game. Uh, More preview. This is John Harbaugh, coach of the Ravens, on uh, what we can expect in terms of uh, talent on the field on Monday. I feel like we match up well against anybody, but basically. And we we like our players a lot. We think we have really, really excellent players, the highest level players. It's going to be hard to to, to, to out. for us not to match up well. It's going to be hard to outmatch us. I don't care who you are. So we like our matchups. I'm sure they like ours, and we're going to play on, on Monday night. Yes, they are. Now, the, uh, the Kyle Hamilton is, is starting to get some real recognition here, Notre Damer, and uh, really stepping up this year. And there's a lot of conversation about Kyle Hamilton being a pro bowler, which he is eh, sort of happy to hear about, but not necessarily going overboard about. I would say it's cool, uh, just cool. Uh, I think it's – uh, pretty cool, honestly, at the end of the day. Uh, you know, growing up, uh, watching the NFL, you always see these guys who are doing well around the league, and uh, I've always wanted to be that. And to this point now, I feel like I've done pretty well this year, but I feel like there's still a lot that I can improve on and uh, a lot that I want to get better at, and I don't feel like I personally have had, uh, let's say, a satisfactory year. I've had a good year, but I feel like I hold myself to a high standard, and uh, I have a lot more getting better to do. That's why it's just cool. Cool. Uh, as far as um, all this yak, you know, all the talk, the the underdog role for uh, for Baltimore and uh, people anointing San Francisco the number one team in the league and uh, the, the MVP race and all that, Hamilton says, you know, <laughs> it's fine to hear all this talk, but, but it's all going to be done on the field. We take it with a grain of salt, you know. Uh, there's got to be a narrative made, and if we're on the wrong side of it, so be it. But uh, I think we don't really care about that, honestly. I know I don't, and I know a lot of guys on the other team. Um, speaking for everybody else, I assume that we're all in the same uh, mindset in the sense that we we only have control of what we do, what we say, and we talk with our pads. So, um, like I said, we still got to go out and play a football game, no matter how much we want to talk about it, no matter how much we want to say we're underdogs or – this and that, they're overhyped, whatever. We still got to go play a game. So that's what it comes down to. Yes, sir. Monday night, uh, 820. Last thing from John Harbaugh as we uh, head into this holiday, the holiday week. Uh, Harbaugh on what he wishes for Christmas. Well, you know, life is always better when you win, right? So that's probably the, the number one thing that we're all going to try to accomplish out there. But um, I would say, you know, if, you, if you're asking if anybody really cares, I would just say that we all, you know, really try to remember, you know, that uh, the Advent message, you know, and the idea that there are great and amazing, incredible things going on. And and just the very fact that we have life and the very fact that we, you know, we have something beyond that, you know, that is eternal and uh, that we're all here together for a reason to live together, you know, in, in peace. You know, let's... Uh, that's what I would say. Let's try, to, let's try to get along, you know. Let's try to get along for a week. See if we can pull that off. You know, that'd be nice. So, But I guess that would be it. And, and a win. That, you know, those two things. <laughs> World peace and a win. How about that? <laughs> okay. I'm not sure in that order. No. 
Yeah, it'll be good. World peace and a win. Uh, we'll see about the win. I don't know how much control he has over world peace, but uh, he's got his team playing very well. There's some injuries to be concerned about, including, you know, Ronnie Stanley still dealing a concussion protocol, and uh, we'll see if he's ready to go and uh, about the wide receivers that are a little banged up. But uh, this team has rolled along, and again, uh, Lamar Jackson staying healthy has been a big reason they are where they are, and you keep your fingers crossed and hope he gets you over the finish line to the playoffs where he can you know, make up for what has been uh, disappointing postseasons for him. He has not played in the last two, uh, and if he gets them there this year with the team they've got and the way they're playing – uh, they could be a team that gets there from the AFC, and this could very well be a uh, preview of the Super Bowl. Some more numbers. Uh, San Francisco, number two in total offense in the league in yardage, 402 yards a game. Baltimore's number five, 374. As I mentioned, San Francisco, number two in passing. Baltimore, 20. San Francisco, number three in rushing, but Baltimore is number one. And in scoring, uh, San Francisco averaging 30 points a game, Baltimore averaging 27.4. So they're number three and number four in the league. But here's the thing. Uh, defensively, neither one of them gives up any points. Uh, San Francisco is number two in points allowed, 16.7. Baltimore is number one at 16.1. And yards per game, Baltimore is number two in giving up 288. And San Francisco is number nine at 310. So both teams are pretty much top five in every category except Baltimore in passing yardage. But uh, they are number one in rushing the football, and I think that's going to be very key to keep the ball out of the hands, out of those weapons like Debo Samuel and uh, and and Brock Purdy and Christian McCaffrey. So uh, it does shape up to be the game of the year, and it's going to be tremendous. It'll be Monday night. We'll have it here for you coming up at 7.30. Next, we got the Tony Kornheiser Show sitting in for Tony as we head into the holiday. Stay with us. You're listening to ESPN 630.